So this one we had, uh, let me recap real quick because I'm recording. Uh, so we have people who didn't lie, but uh, has a positive test. People who didn't lie had a negative test. People who lied and had a positive test. People who didn't lie and had a negative test. Uh, so the first thing you have to do is total everything out for the don't lied and lied, positive test and negative test, and total. So the question is asking, what is my probability of having somebody who didn't lie? So I take the total number of people who didn't lie divided by my grand total of 109, which gets us 0.477. Um, so the question has a, so this is our actual amount, and this is our theoretical, if I can spell. Um, so the, the thing gives us a 0.45%, and they want to know, is that more or less okay? So what I did is I subtracted my actual, these are my theoretical, and found it at 0.027064. Um, the homework has the fact is it's asking yes or no. <coughs> if it was less than, equal to, or greater than. Um, so this was uh, a 0 0.05 rate. So it was less than a 0 0.05. Because, and because of that, then yes, it is more or less the same thing as the theorized yield or um, percentages. So for this, number eight, which people are also having uh, issues with. So men have X, Y, or Y, X chromosomes. It's usually X, Y, because Y has no information. And women have X, X chromosomes. Uh, so recessive genes uh, are usually passed on on the X because like I said, the Y has next to no information. Um, and it, if the, these usually uh, occur <coughs> via defective X chromosomes without a paired X chromosome that is not defective. Uh, so this is when you have um, homo, oh, sorry, heterozygous or homozygous, heterozygous uh, diseases. There's a couple of, I, there's a couple of them. I just can't remember the name of them. Uh, so, so they're using uh, a, Defective X chromosome is a lower X. So a child with a uh, lowercase X capital Y or Y lowercase X, pair of chromosomes will have the disease. And a child with XX or XY or YX or any of the combinations will not have the disease. So the X, little X is recessive um, portrait. Uh, so this is uh, single cell anemia is an example of this. You have to be, no, wait, no, that's heterozygous. Uh, maple syrup urine disease is actually one for this. Um, so each parent contributes uh, one of the chromosomes to the child. Um, if the father has a defective, so we're going to do a hybrid cross. So the father has a lowercase x and capital Y. And the mother has XX. Uh, what is the probability that the son will inherit the disease? So we are literally doing a hybrid cross from high school. Um, so on this, because you have to have an X by itself, and the mother has two X chromosomes, you, uh, what you're doing is you, at this point, you're breaking things into uh, homozygous dominant uh, home, uh, heterozygous and homozygous recessive. Uh, for those of you who don't remember what these words mean, mosaicus is same gene, essentially. Uh, hetero, I guess, 
is different gene. What that means is if I have the same capital letter dominant trait present in both, it's going to be a homozygous dominant. If I have two lowercase x's, it's going to be recessive. And if I have a mixture, it's going to be heterozygous because they are different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a count. So I have two dominants right here. And then I have two heterozygous right here. So I can find the probability. So this is the count. And the probability is it going to be equal to that divided by four. Sorry. Because I have four probability, four total types. So the, pat, the chance that the father has a defective X chromosome and the mother has a good uh, probability that the son will inherit the disease, since the disease has to be um, lowercase x's or uh, lowercase xy, we have none of the individuals with both. So this would be a zero. If you have a father who has a disease that is sex linked and a mother who is homozygous dominant, you cannot pass on the disease. You can pass on females who are carriers. Um, this is a case study for biology for the royal family, which is, has this for uh, hemophilia. So if the father has a defective X chromosome, so we're going to do this again, down here. And the mother has a good XX chromosome, what is the probability, oh, I don't have to do this again, that the daughter will inherit the disease. So once again, I'm looking just right here, they don't inherit the disease. There is a zero probability because it's not dominant. Uh, so if the mother has one defective X chromosome, so this one, I'm gonna copy this. It's gonna ask if what happens if one of these is a lowercase x. So they wanna know what happens. Um, what's gonna happen? So on this one, we're gonna to have to redo these counts over here. So we're gonna have one homozygous dominant here. Let me change that to no fill. We're going to have, actually, it's going to be blue. We have one, two homo heterozygous, and we're going to have one, make it green, homozygous recessive. So we have a one to two to one ratio. So what is the probability that a son will inherit the disease? So remember, uh, males are only XY. So you have two males. And one of them will have the disease. So one divided by two is 50%. If the mother has one defective, what's the probability that the daughter will inherit the disease? Well, if we look at it, we have one who has a carrier and one who has a disease. So once again, we're looking at the same 50%. Wait. Oh, good. XY chromosome. Oh, so this is acting specifically for the XY chromosome. So the father has no disease. So once again, if we do it that way, we end up with this, which is another, uh, I guess I should. Uh, let me copy this again.
So in this one, we have a mother who is a carrier and the father is has a normal one. So we have X, 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 Y, X, Y. So this turns into a blue. So what's asking for the probability a daughter will inherit the disease? Well, we have two um, possible daughters and zero disease from those daughters. And that's how you do this, is you just end up changing these into what it needs to be. And then you look at the probability for each one. I'm so glad I've taught this at AP bio level. Okay, so that's number eight. Uh, what else uh, do you need help with? Anybody else say any other problems? Oh, uh, let's see what else we have. Anything weird of Does anyone have any preference on questions? Because I'm just looking for things that I can go over. I can go over dependent and independent. Uh, so we have, we can have events called in dependent and independent events. So let's go ahead and talk about this while people are coming up with uh, ideas. So the idea of a dependent and independent variable is something like this. Um, if I have a deck of cards, I don't really need to do this. If I have a deck of cards, <coughs> and, uh, uh, see, I'm going to Vegas and I'm playing blackjack. Easiest way of dependent and independent events. If I play a game and they don't put or don't reshuffle the deck every time the results of my future games are dependent on the results that i see now so what that means is if i am betting and i can remember what cards i've seen before so for instance in blackjack one of the big things you have to worry about are both uh, 10 point cards and aces so if i know there's four decks so there's 16 aces, <coughs> and I've seen 13 of those 16 aces, there's a very low probability that an ace is going to come up. Um, this is how uh, a lot of people get kicked out of casinos. Because it's not illegal to count cards, but you will be asked to leave the, uh, the casino. However, 
what you can do uh, and what they do is they shuffle decks. Um, so the, uh, the dependent one is the dep what I do now is dependent on something else. An independent event is what I do now is not dependent on something I've done before. So that would be like, um, if I am playing blackjack and after every hand, they shuffle the deck. It doesn't matter what came before. Um, or if I'm playing cards and then roll a dice, it doesn't matter what came before because the two events are not tied in any way, shape or form. So that's the difference between a dependent and independent event. One thing is tied to the other. The results will make a difference in the next event. The other one is just by itself and it has nothing that's attached to it. Uh, so there's that. Mm. Can't technically answer that, but. Any other questions while I'm going through these, looking for something that's kind of weird? Huh. Okay, so here's a weird one. So it says about surge protectors because this is going to come up, I'm sure. So you have two surge protectors. Um, the, so the idea of a surge protector, if no one knows, is that you have, um, I have the right end of my thing, you have a wall plug. Let's see if I can actually draw this. And you have two items right here, column P and Q, and they go into a TV. This is number 26, if you care. So each of these, will have a 91% probability of stopping a short or a surge. So each of these has the same percentage. 0 0.91. So what is a probability that a voltage surge will not damage the television? So the easiest way to do this, at least for me, is I have a 9% probability of it going through each one. So to find the probability of two events, you multiply them out. So you have, let's see, how do they want to do this? The probability of A and B is equal to probability of A and times probability of B. P and Q is equal to probability of P and the prob times the probability of Q. Ugh. So 
once again, we had to calculate the one minus that 91% to get 0 0.09. So what we're ending up doing is we're tracking the probability that the surge will get through each one. So what we do is we take that 0 0.09 times 0 0.09, and that's going to be equal to point, uh, 0 0.0081 should be. Let me double check. Zero zero eight one. So the probability of this occurring is less than one percent. So point zero zero eight one. So the probability of it is working is at that point we take it one minus that zero point zero zero eight one to get. 0 0.9919, so 99.19% chance of two circuit breakers working. So this is if they're in ser uh, series, so if they're right in a row. If they are arranged in parallel, what are their chances of doing it. Um, at this point, because what has to happen here, and this is where it gets kind of weird, is in this series, we have the electricity flows this way. So the electricity has to go through this event here, the P, which has that 9%, and this event, Q, which has this percentage. What they're asking at this point is if I have my plug here, if I right, draw the plug correctly, I have a plug here, and instead of doing it in a row, I have P here and Q here, and both of them lead to the TV. So instead of it having to go through both of them, I had to beat either one of them. So instead of having to subtract them and multiply here, I actually and take the probability of each one and multiply them to get your answer. 0 0.91 times 0 0.91 is 0 0.8281. So the probability that it works correctly is 82.81%. So since this is a higher number, the series configuration is works better than the uh, parallel. Does that make sense? <clears throat> so what you're doing on this one, because it's kind of confusing, is you're calculating the chance of making it through each one. Because what can happen is you can make, you have different events. You can go through the first one, you have a 9% chance of going through the first one, 9% chance of going through the second one, or you have 9% chance of going through the first one, and 91% chance of failing. And then technically you have a 91% chance of failing and a 9% chance of passing. And then you have a 91% and a 91%. So all these will add up to 100% of your probabilities. Uh, but because we're looking for essentially these all three of these events is what we're looking for. Add up to that. The easiest way to find it instead of doing the math for all these 
is just to do this math minus this math. Now, since in this one, we have a parallel one, either event will turn off and surge your TV. You had to take the probability of either of essentially the bottom one of both failing, or sorry, one of the two failing. So 91% times 91% gives you essentially that 83% of the time it will succeed and 17% it will not. And the difference is this is dependent. So technically the first event depends on, the, or second event depends on the first event. This is independent. Where it doesn't matter about the other event, the first one is gonna happen. Let's see what else we have. That, oh. I guess I should go over these. These are kind of weird. So this is what happens when you have kids. Um, so this is 27 for those who care. Uh, so I'm going to change the number a little bit, but find the probability of a boy, given that the couple has... three kids. So the easiest way to do this, K1, K2, K3. Is to draw the possible combinations. So you can have boy, boy, boy boy, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, boy. So you can do girl, 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 boy, girl, and then girl, girl, boy. And then all girls. So how many of them were if at least one of them is a girl, a boy? Well, you have one out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Where no boys. So there are seven out of eight with boys. Um, a couple of these. Uh, so I'm trying to look for another one. Does anyone else have any other questions specifically that they want answered? Oh, combination permeations. I can go over combinations and permeation permeations again real quick too. Uh, where's my book? Oh, 
So since we've got 20 minutes and people are kind of silent, so let me go ahead and go over these guys. Let me get my book out. Okay, so a couple of things we're going to talk about real quick until we all kind of bring out is what is a, something called a factorial? IAL. IAL. So if you're like me and I was kind of a weird kid, so probably not, um, it's the little exclamation point that is on your calculator. So if, when you do is you put a, a number with a, this factorial, and that would mean you're taking all numbers from one to that number and multiply them by each other. So this is four times three times two times one. So 12, 24. So the reason we have that, it's the total number of ways that a item can be rearranged. Um, so there are 24 different ways I can rearrange something of four items. So on that three, so that one we had before, when we had three kids, we do three, two times one is six different ways. So somehow I messed up. So there are six different ways that I can rearrange three kids. So technically it would have been five, six. Um, so we have something called a permeation, I'm sorry, permutations. Those are important because if you have a position, if position is important, and then you, we have combinations, and these are quote unquote, I hate it when that happens, committees. So permutations are given permutations we have n p r so n is number specifically of items And R is the do, 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 uh, selected or number selected without replacement. So the formula for this. N factorial over N minus R factorial. And that's how you do permeations. So for instance, um, if we have, what was it 21 or 19 horses at, at uh, Churchill Downs. How many different... Trifecta, how many different trifectas can we get?
So we know we have an N is equal to 19 because there's 19 horses and we're choosing three horses. So we have 19 exclamation point over 19 minus three exclamation point. So that would give us 19 exclamation point factorial over 16 factorial, which you can either put into a calculator or if you know since one times uh, 19 factorial is one times two times three, yada, 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 eight uh, till 19. And this is one through 16. I can do 17 times 18 times 19. And it would give me 5,814 different trifectas that you could choose. And remember, this has nothing to do with odds. It has everything to do with just a pure number of possibilities. And so the other one that's going to be annoying is called combinations. So combination is given by the formula. Well, we have N C R is equal to N squared over N minus R factorial R factorial. So <coughs> Let's do the lottery. Everyone likes the lottery. Uh, so Powerball has 60 numbers. Let's just do a daily uh, pick five. We usually have 40 numbers. And lotto, pick five. Um, How many different combinations are there? Combos if there is replacement, because apparently the California lottery is really not nice. So we have uh, n factorial. So we have 40 factorial. 40 factorial over 40 minus five factorial, five factorial, which would give us 40 factorial over 35 factorial, five factorial. So that would be equal to 36 times 37 times 38 times 39 times 40 over one times two times three times four times five. So that's one to 10, one to two, cancels out, 12, one. So 12 times 37 times 38 times 39, is 658,008. Different possible combinations on this lottery. Okay. Um, 
we're getting on to about 50 minutes. Does anyone else have any specific questions about this or no? Um, so hopefully this will help you when it comes up uh, soon. Um, if not, I'm pretty much thinking that's about all I have, I'm gonna do for today because my brain's kind of foggy. Uh, so if you guys have more questions, you can hit me up through the normal channels. Um, if not, I will see you guys on Tuesday. Let me see what we have real quick for homework next week. Uh, where's the calendar? It's week three. Really? Uh, nope, you're still working on top of two homework. So you, you got a while on that. Yeah, I'm just checking that. That's pretty much what I got for today. So I'll see you guys uh, later. I'm done, you know that, right?